picking out these broad beans. Um, seriously, I don't know why I grow these. They're, um, I plant them in the autumn and they've just such a huge feature on the landscape. They're, they're big and so it makes me feel like during the winter I'm actually growing something. But when it comes to eating them, uh, I'm not so, not so keen. I have tried to eat them at several stages. We ate them when they were just little fellas and we didn't enjoy them. Then we ate them when they were a little bit bigger and we still didn't enjoy them. I've tried, this year I really, really tried. I honestly did. Um, we had them in a stir fry when they were little. We had them cooked in butter and bacon. I mean, surely that would make anything taste good, butter and bacon. But, and I even made a garlic mint lemon pesto, which was quite nice, apart from the broad bean. So what I'm gonna do, and now they're starting to get a bit big and the leaves are starting to go a bit yellow, so it's telling me it's time to pull them out. Um, so I'm gonna, keep some and try one last attempt at making something that's remotely delicious with these broad beans. So if you've got any ideas or any suggestions please let me know in the comment box down below and I will I'll try the most interesting one. But yeah, um, but the rest of them, they're going to my mate Steve. Steve loves broad beans. So Steve, come in your way. Alright, but for now, it's just not it's not just the broad beans that are ready for harvest. There's loads of stuff. Let me come and show you. Okay, we've had a few broccoli and I'm just leaving them there so that um, in under the joints there'll be some new ones come through, some little um, what do you call it? Oh little florets come through and we'll get another crop, maybe two if we're lucky. Just small. But the broccoli is just looking amazing. I mean, that's um, probably ready for harvest. Probably soon, actually. It goes quite quickly once you, once it starts to get to this point. So we might have to have that for tea tonight. Or we could have kohlrabi. Now this is fabulous. I love kohlrabi. Um, we had it last night, no, the other night, we chopped it up so it was the size of french fries and just dipped it into tartia sauce. It was amazing. Or we could have a salad. Salads are always good. The raspberries are still very, very good. Oh, they're yum. The black currants will be ready soon. So will the red currants. We've been eating the fennel. Oh, it's so nice. You slice it thinly, marinate it in orange juice. Oh, so good. So the peas are doing really, really well. There's a bit of leaf miner damage, but at the end of the day, I fought so hard to get these crops that um, I don't mind so much because they're coming out soon anyway. But, oh my gosh, check this out. They are amazing. Look at that. Perfect peas. Oh, and they taste good too. I wish you could taste them. Fresh peas. I love this time of year. Because you can just eat your way around the garden. So there's a lot of peas. Just loads. Which is great. And the big peas are getting bigger every day. And they're starting to give us peas. Won't be long. Now here's a good lettuce. It's firmed up really nicely. It's really solid. So we have to eat that soon as well. Most of the holes in them are not actually um, slug damage. It's hail. So it's a bit annoying. But it is what it is. It's better to be hail than slugs. I think it might be time to harvest the beetroot. I might do something interesting with it. There's always asparagus. And there's always weeds. These don't stop. And the rhubarb's looking good too. My spinach is bolting to seed, so I'll need to salvage what leaves I can and then plant some more. We're getting chilies. 
that's really cool. And then of course there's always strawberries. Look at the size of him. Yum. Oh my gosh, that's summer right there. Mm -mm. Now these potatoes might look a bit windswept. These are my Jersey Bennies. But if we just poke about, look at that. Now, oh, there's another one there. That's not bad. We're going to have a wonderful Christmas. Oh dear. You leave it a day. Lucky I grabbed it now. Oh, there's loads. That's okay. I'd like to try and stuff those with a soft cheese and then fry them up. It's got to be good. I shall have to try that. The tomatoes are coming along nicely. I've even got flower sprout sprouting, which is cool. Now, it may look a little gloomy in the background, but it's actually really quite hot. This muggy weather is really driving me crazy. So my garden is up near the house. So we have easy access to our vegetables. But we have three acres. And so we put the orchard down the end so that we would actually go there. So let's go and have a look. We're waiting for the the hay cutter to come and cut all the grass. Hey, this is Snowy. And this is Sweetie, and they are gorgeous. Hello, Dilly. They don't do anything useful, like milk or anything like that. They just Leftover calf club pets, and we love them, hey? Yes, we do. Yeah, hello. Hey. Now, don't look too closely at the grass because it needs mowing. So, this is my orchard, and it's really weedy, and I need to do something about it. But I'll get there in the end. It's peaches, loads of nectarines, more peaches. We've got quince and apple, a lot of apple gonna be a good season. Plum row always disappoints. We never really get anything. The uh, Fijoa tree is flowering really well. It's like a kind of a Christmas tree. But this is what we're here for. We are here for the elderflower. It's good to see the bees out and about pollinating my Elderflowers. Then we can have elderberries and make elderberry wine. So that's my orchard. It's a little neglected. That's okay. I'm onto it. I shall sort it out. So we've just come back from the orchard with our beautiful elderflowers. Now, some recipes, because I've been trawling the internet, some recipes call for like five flowers and others call for um, 15. So less is more so I went for 15. Now I have, um, they're all pretty much open completely on the flower head, there's not too many little buds and there's also not too many ones that are a bit past it. So they're in their prime. I read somewhere also that it's really good to Get them when they've had some sun on them because the flavors are stronger and it has been a lovely weather today right now before we really get started one of the most important things is we're actually we're making wine here we're doing a fermentation so i've sterilized all my equipment everything's clean and we're ready to go because we want the fermentation to happen from natural yeast not natural mold so firstly with the sugar now i've looked all over the internet and it said anywhere between 700 grams and, um, and, and a kilo and a half. And so taking it more, more of them were around the 700 mark. So I'm going to do that. Now my scales are actually um, broken, so I'm going to use my measuring cup. 
So roughly three cups of flour, oh, flour, sugar. Um, it doesn't matter too much because the variation is so wildly on the internet and everybody claims to have had success. So roughly three cups-ish. You know, if you go a little bit over, it's not the end of the world. So here we go. So there's roughly three cups of sugar. Now we need to dissolve that. I have boiled my kettle and we need about a litre of water. Got boiling water to dissolve it. So that's a litre of water there. Peel back. Now, right, so I'll stir that. Now, one of the things with winemaking is using metal can, containers can often react with the alcohol process, and so it's best, it's best to use glass or plastic rather than, um, rather than metal because you will get a taint coming from the metal. So, now I'm just dissolving this sugar. Okay, so that's pretty much dissolved. That's dissolved well enough. I have this lovely glass jar that I'm going to use. Right. Very messy. There we go. Now, that's too hot to put the elderflower in because you could kill the natural yeast. So what I have is I'm going to top it up with about I'm going to top, top it up with there's a let's see that's a liter and a half. And that's going to cool it down. And then I've got another there's another half litre here. So that's so that's three litres all up of liquid. So it should be quite strong. I might top it up with a bit more water when I'm finished. So what I'm going to add next is some lemon. Now let's see the rind and the juice of two lemons. So I've got these lemons. Now if you're going to buy lemons, make sure you don't buy the ones with a waxy coating. And um, also try not to get the pith because the pith has got um, pectin in it. And while pectin is good for um, jam, you don't want it in your wine. It interferes with the process. Okay, so I've got my lemon rind going in. Juice. Gosh, that's how much more lemon juice is going to pronounce lemon. Right, so that's those. Now, okay, so I also need two tablespoons of white wine vinegar. Now this is something that it didn't really get um, it didn't really get compromised on in the recipes that I saw. So however much they made, however many volumes of liquid and however many elder flowers, they always put two tablespoons of white wine vinegar, so I shall do the same. Hopefully by then 
it will be fermenting and that will be really good. So that was a quick tour of my garden of all the things that are ready to harvest. It's pretty cool. And the bonus tour of my orchard. Please don't judge me for how messy and weedy it looks. It's just I've been so busy. But I intend to get onto it this summer. It's um it's interesting because having you guys pop around to my garden once a week is making me be a tight, more tidy gardener because when I'm writing for my blog I take photos I choose to take and I hide the mess out of shot whereas you could catch something in the background that I haven't taken care of so I'm becoming a tidier gardener so thank you very much but um what we've got here is this is um, a bottle of the elderflower cordial that we made this week and the bottle has really tightened up so I wouldn't recommend putting it in glass because there's a lot of pressure going on there, it could explode. But, so yeah, so I'm really looking forward to having some of this on Christmas Day to celebrate the festive cheer. Fresh elderflower cordial. Ugh, what am I talking about? Elderflower champagne. So, but for now, I need, these need to go. These heritable broad beans. So if you do have any ideas of how I can use the last attempt at convincing me that they're good. So for now, I need to put that down and get on with harvesting these because I think they're done. That's a pretty impressive lot. Look at that. Broad beans. So come again soon. It's not that far until Christmas and the festivities are beginning to catch up with us. So come next week and see what we've been up to. Thanks for watching.